today we're going to look at creating a basic program in flow code and that program is going to be a counter because counters are really useful we use them for lots of different things and uh, you know you can count up you can count down it can be counting to an alarm you can be uh, counting to see how long something's going to take some kind of stopwatch or something like that so we're going to just kind of look at how we can create something which keeps track of time by making something that just counts on the screen uh, to tick up. So I've added in the BL0169 into the program here, and you can see it's on the screen there, and we're gonna use this to display our counter on. Looking at the program side of things, first of all, I'm gonna put in a loop, and this loop is gonna be where the main program is, so as it's counting, it's gonna be going round and round this loop. But because we've got this uh, LCD screen in, we're going to need to start it up because it's quite a complicated piece of equipment and it takes a little bit of uh, programming to start, so we need to uh, boot it up effectively. And all we need to do is add a component macro and expand the LCD section here and choose start. And all that does is it resets everything and makes it ready, ready to go. Like I say, it's probably one of the more complicated pieces of equipment that we use at this level much more complicated than a switch or an LED, so it needs its own little boot up procedure. Next, I am going to create a variable which is going to hold the value of whatever we're counting to. So I'm going to call my variable count, and because we're going to start counting at one, I want to give it the initial value of zero. Every, uh, every time it goes through a second, what we need to do is two add a second on. So I'm going to add in a calculation, and this is a calculation is used to change the value of variable, and I'm just going to say count equals count plus one. Now this might look a little bit strange if you are used to kind of looking at maths equations, but it is quite common in programming to have something like this. And what we're saying, this count equals, let's say we're going to give count a new value. And then the count plus one means that that value was going to be one bigger than count is already. So if count zero, it becomes one. If it's one, it becomes two, and so on and so on and so on. The next thing I want to do is I want to print that on the screen. So I'm going to get another component macro, and I'm going to use something for the screen. So I'm just going to print number, and I'm going to print that uh, count variable. So it's going to start up the screen, go into this while loop, and it's going to keep adding one to the, the value and then print that value on the screen. It'll go round and round and round. So if I click play, it puts a load of values on the screen. So it's not quite what we want. And the reason for this is because this is working at the computer speed and does thousands and thousands of these re revolutions a second because it works really, really fast and it can calculate things much faster than we can. So we want to slow that down and we can use a delay for that. So add a delay in. This means it's going to take one millisecond every time it goes here, but because we're counting, we'll probably want to count in seconds. So I can go for seconds here. I can change this value here. I can make it two seconds or three seconds, or I can make it 500 milliseconds, which is going to be half a second. But actually, I think one second makes a lot of sense in this case. So now if I press play, you can see it's going to start counting one, two, three, four, and so on, and so on, and so on. And this is pretty useful. Um, it, you know, you can see it counting, but as you can see, when it gets to 10, 11, 12, it starts to become quite difficult to see what's going on. Now I've got quite a useful little thing to put in for that. And I am going to put another macro in, and right before I print the number, I'm going to tell it on the screen where it's going to print. So we need to use another component macro. And that one that we're going to use is this cursor. Now if I hover over a cursor, it tells us what it does. It says it moves the cursor on the LCD display. So that, if you think about when you're using a Word document or something like that, the cursor is a little flashing line which says where you're about to type. And all it does is it moves the cursor from the top left to wherever you want on the screen. And we've got two parameters for that. We've got an X parameter and a Y parameter. And if you look at this screen, it's got 20 squares going across and it's got four squares going up and down. And the X value says which square we're going from across the top 
And because it's 20 here, it goes from zero, because computers count from zero, all the way up to 19. So that gives you all 20. And it goes maybe the opposite way to what you expect when looking vertically. It goes from zero in the top left, down to one, uh, down to three at the bottom row. So if I want to print somewhere in the middle, I might go for nine. So that's going to take me to uh, this column here. So nine spaces across. And the Y, I'm just going to go for one. So I should start printing this square you can see here. I'm going to press OK. So now when I press play, you can see it starts counting at this point here. And it's counting through quite nicely. But when it gets to 10, it will print in both of those points, which is great. That's exactly what we want them to do. So you can see that there, that's 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 really useful. Um, if I want to change it to a countdown timer, where this count equals count plus one makes it go upwards, if I just change this minus, it means we're taking one away each time. And because we're taking one away, and we're currently starting at zero, I want to change where I'm starting as well. So let's say I'm going to change it to five. So I'm going to count down from five. So press play. It goes four, three, two, one, zero, and then it goes all the way to two, five, five, which seems like a really strange number to go to. And the reason for that, if we open up count, it's currently chosen to be a byte. So this can only have a value of zero to 255. And that means after it, but anything below zero, it's gonna go all the way back to 255. A little bit like when you have a speedometer or a, a, a mileometer on your car. And as it's counting the miles that you've done, it'll go round and round and round and round. And then when it gets to 9,999 or 900,000, 999, it rolls over back to zero. And that's kind of like doing the reverse, rolling backwards from zero to 99999. But this time the biggest value we're gonna show is 255. So what I could do here is change this while loop. So if I change the while loop, and this, what, what it means, while one means it's gonna loop round and round and round forever. Now I've got a couple of options when I change this. I could do a really simple loop count and just say it's gonna loop a number of times, or I could say it's gonna loop while count is greater than zero. And that means it'll go round and round and round until count is zero. So you can see here it's going four, three, two, one, zero. And then the program just stops. You can see up the top, it stopped the program because it exits this loop and goes to the end, which seems quite good. The last thing I want to show you is what happens if I go from a number a little bit bigger than 10. So when I go from 12, it's printing 11, 10, and then the only digit it changes here is 9876543281 at this point here. And the reason why that is, when it's printing two digit numbers, it prints over both of these digits. And then when it gets down to nine, it's only printing over this first digit. And a way I can do that is by another component macro. And just before it prints the value on the screen, I'm gonna use a clear line. And the reason for I'm doing that, rather than a clear, clear clears the whole screen. If I just use clear, it would work, but you can see on the screen it flashes, and that's because clear takes a, a little bit of time. Um, and it means that it, it works a little bit too slow. So you can see it flashing on the screen there. It's fine, it would be okay, but clear line works a little bit better. But we need to give it a little bit more information. I'm just gonna say clear line one. And now, if I press play, you can see that flashing is taken away because clear line works a little bit faster than clear, and it just makes the program work a little bit nicer. You still see it flashes every so often, but it's a lot better counter, and there it finishes counting. So, I feel like that was a nice little introduction to programming on flow code. I've covered quite a few concepts in quite a small amount of time. Let me know what other things you like to see programming. I'll, I'll do some things with uh, buttons. I might even look at other software packages. But I'd really like to know what you think. And I hope to see you again really soon.